cannot vomit in dreams. So now I know that I am jolted into wakefulness. And all that remains of the world I see churning and tossing and plashing in the depths. A rainbow of sludge, a sunburst in muck, glitter congealed to its original plastic sham. Despite my glorious victory, there is much that I must process. To drain off a world through one thickened intestine, to strack it scrapingly across over clotted bowels, to harpoon it in the kidney, then release it at the jaw. Once it rises to my gorge, I will see that it falls into a cold metal bucket clasped in the hands of its mad new god. This ruined world with its ruined people. It repeats on me still. You comprehend? It is more difficult to destroy a world, to exterminate and thoroughly, than to create. Their creation myth proves the contemptible simplicity of that enterprise. Here it now is written in holy scripture. In the beginning, God created the artist. But probably only because he was afraid the artist might create God. And the artist looked to a blank canvas and cried, Oh God, grant me a steady light that I might paint up a world. Then he got bored of waiting, so he moved the canvas of it. And lo, there was his light. And that was the first day. And God jolly well kept out of it after that. The artist's steady light cast a most unsteady shadow. And that was me. From the dregs of that fiery light. From the embers, from the ash. I drew about my shoulders a cloak of charcoal. I eloped to the cornermost corner of the canvas, that place where it takes two ninety degree turns, and on this spike I made my seat. And here I would monitor the artist's progress, painting away to create his seven days wonder. And here I would also remain then the stranger. For that is what I like. On the second day, the artist did prep and did prime his canvas. It provoked me to see such carnage. Everything black or grey or shadowy. Every shadow in short that had that sense to get away was rolled in a moisturizing whiteness. Almost consigned to the deep dark wood, far, far away. Almost rolling off the edge of the canvas into the oblivion beneath. On the third day, the artist made a series of frenzied mistakes. Colours, colours, so many colours, hissing like acid as they splashed on the canvas, gradually taking shape. Walls compounded of opalescent gemstones, iridescent silvers and golds. Waters reflecting far too many moons and stars and suns. Now those walls made of gemstones, they stood high enough, but they were built strong enough. So why were the gates left always open? What put in a wall if you can't keep out? Strangers. And beyond those walls, in the cities, their palaces floated on high. And that made no sense at all. Note that nothing here cast even a shadow before I arrived. On the fourth day, the artist populated his town with citizens, patrons in activity. Only a very bad artist be creating self patrons. Almost flattery, flattery from flat bees. No different to you. Thank you.
designed for all this nonsense. I knew now that these two attention seekers were the crowning deformities of the artist's canvas. Now, if I could only distract the citizens, I should deprive Sage and Alavia of all power. In turn, this would cause the artist to lose heart, to doubt his dreams, to cease to live. Accordingly, I set up shop in the town square, put on a smiling face. Stop it. 
thirst, provided she sent it in, that it squashed out her brain. <laughs>
my new factory. Even those who didn't want new pieces. <laughs> they had such odysseys of time now, because the pieces did everything for them, but they begged to be put to some nourishing work. I sealed them in little rooms that prod and push and poke at electric beasties, ever hoping for some fulfilling new function. They became one with the machines. Uh, all too predictably, Alavia and Sage came scattered into the tower. Oh when I showed mercy to the citizens, the chance to become one with the world, I could show none to them. begun to create his sounds, I found that I could swallow them. So sage, I imprisoned at the bottommost depths of the chimney, where he might feed his wisdoms on a grimy, crusty bed like the lowest aquatic worm. His song came from the depths like the dying of a whale. 